and welcome to Chagpar MD. Today we're talking all about America's favorite beverage, coffee. Many of you asked about whether coffee can help you lose weight. Uh, and what are the health benefits or not so much benefits of drinking your daily java? Stay tuned, we're going to talk all about that and I'm going to give you all of the studies to back up the claims for the risks and benefits of daily coffee. So what do you say? Let's get started. So today we're talking all about coffee, weight loss, and your health. Did you know that 64% of American adults drink at least one cup of coffee a day? And on average, drink 3.1 coffee drinks per day? That's 140 billion cups a year. The coffee industry is booming. Whether it's Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or whether it's just coffee in the kitchen in the morning, Americans love their coffee. And newsflash, that's also the case worldwide. So many of you asked me about whether coffee really has an impact on weight loss. Many of you may have heard about something called the Coffee Lover's Diet, which was written by Bob Arnott uh, a few years ago. He really purported drinking three cups of coffee a day. But remember, that diet also included limiting your calories to 1,500 calories per day, um, as well as getting fiber and protein and so on. So was it really the coffee that made the difference? And does the coffee lover's diet actually work? Well, this is all a little hard to say. We're going to dig into all of that, as well as what are the health consequences of drinking coffee. Now, certainly there is a lot of evidence that coffee may actually help you to lose weight. And it does that in a few different ways. First, it increases your metabolic rate. The second is that there was a really interesting study that was published earlier this year from the folks at Harvard that came out in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that found that actually drinking four cups of coffee a day for over 24 weeks can result in a 4% drop in body fat. Now that study that was conducted by Alpret and colleagues was really trying to dig into whether or not coffee affected insulin resistance. And we've talked in these videos a lot about diabetes and insulin resistance and obesity. But while they did not find any impact on insulin resistance, they actually found that it reduced body fat by 4%, which is pretty decent for 24 weeks. We also think that coffee acts as an appetite suppressant, but it only really works in that fashion based on the studies if it's taken less than four hours prior to a meal. Um, if it's longer than that, it really didn't have any effect on appetite or calorie consumption. Now, what about the other health consequences? Many people think that coffee has a lot of negative health consequences in the sense that it can increase hypertension, bony fractures and osteoporosis, headaches, jitteriness, insomnia, diuresis, and certainly those last two can have a negative impact on your health, as we've talked about before in our videos on sleep. But as it turns out, there's a lot of positives to drinking coffee as well. So we know particularly that moderate caffeine consumption can really increase our performance status. It increases our attention and memory performance, increases physical performance and muscular recovery as well. Now, interestingly, there have been a number of studies that have looked at other things that are even more interesting, I find. So type 2 diabetes, while Alfred and colleagues did not find any impact between coffee and insulin resistance, a number of meta-analyses have found that with type 2 diabetes, every additional cup of coffee you can consume actually has a reduction by about 7% of your risk of type 2 diabetes. 
Hard to know really what the correlation is there or the etiology, but it seems to be a nice effect. There is a reduction in cognitive decline and Alzheimer's dementia in meta-analyses by about 65%. And while we think of coffee as increasing jitteriness, it actually reduces Parkinson's disease by up to 60%. Don't worry, I'm gonna leave you a link for all of the evidence and the meta-analyses in the description box below. What about liver cirrhosis? This is perhaps one of the best documented effects of coffee, where increasing coffee consumption by about two cups a day nearly halves the result of the risk of cirrhosis. Um, so interesting phenomenon in terms of what it does in your liver. It also reduces the risk of depression and suicide. So there was a study where they looked at people who drank four cups of coffee a day and found that it resulted in a 20% reduction in depression. Another study with the same dose of coffee found a 53% reduction in suicide rate. And there also seems to be a reduction in some cancers, not all cancers for sure, but in some cancers, particularly in liver cancer. Although there is some evidence that coffee may also reduce your risk in other cancers as well, like endometrial or colorectal. And finally, um, moderate intake of coffee can actually reduce your risk of coronary vascular disease and stroke. So it seems that the bottom line is that coffee actually might be beneficial. Now, remember, you don't want to increase your coffee consumption too much too quickly. A lot of these studies were done in people who were really looking at moderate coffee consumption or who had increased their coffee consumption moderately. If you go from being a non-coffee drinker to drinking four to six cups a day, invariably you're going to feel jittery, potentially get tachycardia or your heart racing, which might not be really beneficial. But I guess the bottom line is, for those of you who really enjoy your morning coffee, remember, life is short, so enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on coffee, its effects on weight loss, as well as on your health. If you did, please feel free to like and share it. Leave me a comment in the description box below. Do you love your coffee? Have you found any positive or negative effects on your health? Have you tried it to lose weight? Have you tried the coffee lover's diet? And what was the result of that? Do you think that that was really due to the coffee or do you think it was due to calorie restriction? Let me know. I'm really interested in your thoughts. And if there are other topics that you want me to cover in these videos, let me know that as well. And finally, please, please, please do subscribe. I try to bring you high quality evidence-based content that will really help us to enjoy a better, healthier life. Until next time. I'm Dr. Anise Chagpar wishing you all a healthy and safe week.